Hey there. So I've got a whole bunch of bisque plates that I got out of the kiln a few days ago, and I'm going to make a quick little video about me glazing them and um, just show you the steps that I take. So right now I'm just going over all the different plates and making sure they're smooth, sanding down any you know spots that need to be smoothed and um, going over it with a sponge to get rid of any dust so the glaze has a clear surface to adhere to. So I'm gonna finish up. Oh, I should also note, whenever you're sanding your bisque ware, it's really, really important to make sure that the area that you're sanding is wet. Sometimes I often will wet the piece itself and the sandpaper because the particles will contain silica and that can be carcinogenic if you breathe it in. So it's really important to make sure that they're wet so then the water molecules hold down the dust. All right. We did it. <laughs> so now I'm going to start glazing these and I'm going to be using two different glazes. Uh, for the moment I'm using uh, some commercial glazes from Spectrum Glaze and the two glazes I'm going to use are called Textured Autumn and Textured Mossy. So I'm going to probably do the Textured Mossy which is a green on the smaller plates and these two are, um, these are the same style plate but they're about a half inch difference. So I'll be doing the Autumn on this set of them. So let's get started. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to be cleaning up the edges a little bit. Uh, if you notice, I left it unglazed on the rim right here. Uh, and that's an aesthetic that I really do like, but this clay body, it vitrifies at cone eight, and I'm firing at cone six. Since they're not achieving their complete vitrification level, that means there's still going to be some level of absorbency down the line. So the, I think the general rule is if it has less than 1% of absorbency, then it's okay. But I think that will be a little bit higher with these pieces. So just to know that they're food safe and uh, to cover all those bases, I'm gonna be covering them with glaze, just to be safe. So I have my turntable here, that's what it's called. <laughs> and I'm just going to be going through and applying some glaze on all those rims and then I'll be cleaning off the edges afterwards. Let's do it. All right, so now I've finished uh, touching up all of the rims of the plates and now I'm going to clean up all the sides. You can see how it's dripped over just a little bit. I really want a sharp edge, so I'm going to be just using a sponge and some water and uh, I have a, a foam bat that I might put on here if I feel I need to. That's sometimes very helpful for cleaning off pieces, in my opinion. And um, after that, I'm going to just do some fettling. So you, you see how it's a little bit uneven there. I'm going to just be rubbing those so there's smooth edges to help get a more clean finish for the glaze. Because if you leave those marks, sometimes you'll have, um, it's a higher likelihood that those impressions will come through the firing and the glaze, which sometimes is nice, but um, for this set of dishes, I think I want to try to make those smooth. So I'm going to clean those up now. Uh, my camera died, so you didn't see the red plates, but I just cleaned them just as I did the green ones, and now we're ready to load. <laughs> So because plates take up a lot of space and they don't leave a lot of negative space for extra plates, I'm going to be stacking in kind of a terraced formation uh, and I'm going to show you while I do that. Uh, so now I'm just going to start loading them up and I have um, for the red plates, they are about uh, half an inch or three fourths of an inch tall. So I have enough room where I can put a one inch spacer so then I can put another plate above them with no risk of touching. So that's how I'm going to approach the loading for these plates. All right, let's get started.
All right, so that was pretty good. I got some um, really nice results out of that firing. I'm really pleasantly surprised. There was only a couple of severe warping. <laughs> that was these two plates. Oh, so sad. They are as warped as I've ever seen. Um, but that was a good lesson also because um, it was because these two were balanced on uh, the stilts in a way that they weren't supported on at least three points. So they were, it makes total sense. Yeah. Anyway, I'll, I guess I can keep these for, you know, a, a Mad Hatter's tea party or something else that <laughs> feels appropriate. But most of these just came out really nicely, really even finish. Yeah, really happy with a lot of these. Well, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.